All movement of inventory is logged in the inventory movement history, so you can view the movement status of a product and reconcile its physical and aggregate quantities. Inventory movement is defined as any transaction that adds or subtracts from the inventory quantity, such as shipped orders or received purchase orders. You can view the movement of a product by opening the toolbox and clicking Inventory Movement. If you're on the Product Detail page, you can click on the View Movement link over here. The Inventory Movement History page has three areas the search filters, the inventory summary, and the grid. With the search filters, you can search for movement in a selected warehouse, search by movement type, or search movement within a date range. If the product is a shadow, you can select from the product ID filter to view movement of either the shadow or the parent products. Let's look at the inventory summary area. The inventory quantity is always calculated from the date of the last physical inventory count. The date of the last physical can be displayed by hovering over the last physical inventory quantity. Every warehouse has its own physical quantity, and this pop-up window shows the date of the last physical count for each warehouse. The total inventory change is the sum change of the inventory, based on the movement shown in the grid. The calculated inventory is the sum of the last physical quantity after factoring in the inventory change. This gives you the current physical quantity. Right below is shown the quantities that are reserved and not sellable. We'll explain reserved quantities later. An example of not sellable inventory would be inventory that is stored in an unsellable warehouse. The calculated available inventory takes into account the combined reserve and unsellable quantities of the calculated physical inventory to give you the number of available units. Typically, the calculated available units are sellable and the available quantity will equal the aggregate available quantity. When viewing a kit whose inventory is dependent on a main kit component, the movement history will be directed to the movement history of the main component. If the kit is dependent on all components, then the movement will be directed to the component with the lowest available inventory. The grid details the movement of the inventory. Information in the grid includes the SKU, the date of the action, the name of the vendor, the sales channel, and the company at which the movement occurred. The next three columns detail the change in quantity. For example, the type column in this row indicates that a purchase order was received, and the quantity column shows a positive change of 15. Clicking on the Detail ID link will open the related purchase order. This type column shows that an order was shipped and details a negative quantity change of 1. It's important to understand the difference between an order and an order reserve. An order type refers to an order that was already shipped. A quantity change of the order type affects the physical quantity. The order reserve type refers to an unshipped order, and its change only affects the available quantity. The order reserve type is accounted for in the reserved row in the inventory summary area. As orders come into the system, they are marked with the status of order reserve along with the date of the order placement. As soon as they are marked as shipped, their movement type will change to order and the physical inventory will be updated. The date will then change to the date of the shipping. From the action menu, you can export the movement history to an Excel file. Clicking on View Reserved Orders will open a grid on the Manage Orders page with all reserved orders. To view all movement of the item from the time it was first entered into the system, click View All Movement. In this view, you'll also see the name of the user or customer who executed or initiated the movement. For more information about viewing inventory movement, please visit wiki.sellercloud.com.